Hey everyone, it's Rhonda here from Nelson Soapery. Today we're going to be making some goat milk soap. So let's get going and we'll make this gorgeous soap. We're going to be using um, a powdered goat milk soap um, today. So this is the um, one that I'm going to be using. You can get it from your local chemist and it's just a powdered form um, so that we can create it all. No scent at all. We won't be putting any scent in this. We'll be making it really natural and I'm just going to be popping into bars such as this. So let's get going and I'll bring it all together and uh, we'll make some beautiful creamy soap that will be great for people with eczema. Goat's milk has that um, belief that it is really beautiful for people with eczema. My daughter has severe eczema so I will be getting her to try out one of these and see what she thinks. Anyway let's get going. So to start with we have our bucket. This is my uh, lye in here which is quite warm. I'm doing the heat transfer method so I'm just going to be popping in all of my mixture here. So I do have some um, coconut oil in here. I also have some shea butter and I also um, have some certified palm oil. So the certified palm oil I have 150 grams. I also have 150 grams of coconut oil and then I have 100 grams of unrefined uh, shea butter which is really really beautiful and I've already pre-measured it before just so that you didn't have to watch me and wait and wait and wait. So of course the lye in here is warm, so the warmness of the lye is going to just, you know, melt all this down. So I just thought we will, you know, do it the easy way. Sometimes I actually do it so that I weigh everything out and you can see it, but I'm sure that you don't need to um, see me do absolutely everything. <laughs> you know, it's good if I sometimes can already pre-do things. So basically the whole idea of this with the heat transfer method is we're just going to melt all these hard oils down. Once they're melted down, then we're going to be popping in our liquid oils, which will be, you know, um, our olive oils and so on. I'm going to be using a really beautiful olive oil, which is an extra virgin olive oil and will give, um, you know, will give that really beautiful kind of greeny, olivey type color to it. And this is natural. This is a really natural one that I'm doing with no colors and so on. So I think it's really good if you know we just do it with like I said all of the great products in it and the only extra that I'll be putting in it will be the goat's milk also in my water content here I've taken a small portion out of it which is um, I've taken 75 grams out of my uh, main portion of water and I'm going to be mixing the goat's milk into that so that way I'm not adding extra uh, water or anything like that into my mix if you're going to be adding extras into your mix you need to um, actually pop it back through soap calc and see exactly how you can do um, that but basically the water content of this your distilled water to create the lye was 275 grams so I put 200 waters in here 200 grams of water and of course like I said the 75 grams in that so it's still going to equal the same amount once I mix in the goat's milk um, to this mixture as well so I'm working with a thousand gram um, at the moment just so that I can do a batch that's not majorly big and I'll be able to make some bar soap um, on my website I now have my soap into sections so I have one that's like a bakery soap which is you know all my cakes and donuts and kind of the fun ones then I have another one that's bar soap so it'll be just your general bar soap that you know you would use in your shower and then um, of course you know um, I've also got uh, my artesian soap. Couldn't think of the word then. So, you know, my artesian soap is obviously the ones that I make that look kind of fancy, that have the tops on them and, you know, soap dough things in it, you know, like my fairy inspired or mermaids or unicorns. They're kind of all artesian soap. And um, I will actually change some of the prices to reflect that. So the bar soap will be a lot cheaper than the artesian soap because obviously it doesn't have the amount of work into it. Um, it is, you know, your standard um, particular um, soap. I mean, it's still beautiful and still amazing and still has all the beautiful raw ingredients that I always use. And most of you that know me would know my main recipe. But for those of you that don't, uh, my hard oils are always coconut oil, um, certified palm oil and unrefined shea butter. Sometimes I will add um, 
cocoa butter in there. But at the moment for this recipe, I'm not going to be doing that today. And then uh, my liquid oils are usually um, olive oil or extra virgin, depending on the recipe. So sometimes that changes a little. Um, I always add sweet almond oil. If I'm doing a face bar, I will change the sweet almond oil um, for apricot kernel because that is a much lighter oil and doesn't have the higher fat content that they, um, the sweet almond does. So, you know, there's reasons for adding certain um, oils, you know, into the mix that I often add. And then, of course, I add castor oil. To be honest, castor oil doesn't do that much to soap. It adds bubbles. Um, and it does add a, like a bit of a thick kind of creamy consistency, but generally it does not that much more than um, bubbles. But, you know, we've all been kind of trained that, you know, we need bubbles in our soap. We actually don't, but, you know, lots of people will say, oh, there's not enough bubbles to me. And that's just because we're sort of, you know, we're educated to think that bubbles mean cleanliness, but which isn't actually true. Um, but anyway, that's what I usually put in and um, never put more than 10% of castor oil or you kind of get like a fatty, sticky kind of bar. Um, this one has 8% castor oil, but generally I'd try and say, you know, keep to five. Five is a good number, five or six um, is really good in castor oil. But anything that I give you or anyone else gives you recipes, do make sure you pop it into soap calc just in case I accidentally wrote a number wrong or someone else did. Because that way, you know, you know that you're getting exactly what you should be getting and you don't want to get something that's wrong um, as well. So now you can see this has taken me quite a few minutes to mix this and it is really, really important to get all the lumps and bumps out. Don't just go and get your stick blender and start blending it. You really want all the bumps out. So just slowly do it and, you know, don't go vigorously. You can see that I'm not like splashing it around. I'm being really gentle with it. And remember that this in here, even though we have the butters, it does have the lye content, which is the sodium hydroxide. Um, and of course that will burn you if it flips up and you know, protect your eyes and be really careful. And as you can see, I do have gloves on and my environment is, you know, sanitized and um, so on. So, but anyway, so we're just gonna leave that to the side, just let the warmth um, melt the last bit. So as I said, I've got my 75 grams here of just distilled water, nothing exciting in a sanitized cup. And then of course I have um, the goat's milk here. On the side, it will say if you wanna make, you know, your traditional goat's milk, it will tell you how much um, on the side that it wants. So basically it's trying to tell you to do one third of a cup of the powder and then, um, you know, and then water. But you know, there's no real right or wrong. But for me, I am going to use a very, very flat tablespoon um, of the powder inside this water. So all we're going to be doing is popping it inside there. And then we're just going to give it a bit of a mix. Um, it's not going to totally dissolve unless the water was warm. So just mix it in so it's mixed in a bit, but it doesn't matter so much because we are going to be blending it anyway into the rest of our mix. But you know, try and mix it in so that it's mixed in as much as you can, and then it will be beautiful and creamy and um, you know, and it will really help um, hopefully somebody with dry skin or that itchy, horrible skin because goat milk is, is just really soft and gentle on the skin. And of course, we're not putting in any fragrances or anything like that, so that will be even better. If you want to put some sort of scent or something in, I would just put a couple drops of essential lavender oil, um, but even then, honestly, you don't need to. Remember, sometimes people with eczema are going to have you know really dry skin or they might even have cracks on their skin so you don't want to hurt their skin anyway you can see how beautiful it looks it's nice and um nice and creamy as well and so then in a moment once this is totally done we'll pop this into here and then we're going to be adding in our other products as well so we'll just mix this around as well to make sure it's all beautiful now another thing that i always add into uh, mine you know, to try and make sure it's all gorgeous and um, everything's perfect. In here, as you can see, the little bit of liquid, there's only a tiny bit. I'm actually adding in um, some sodium lactate. I have to think of the word then. Um, now, sodium lactate is a natural like salt derivative. So all we're going to do is pop that inside. It's going to give a little bit of hardness to the bar. Now, if you want to know percentages of this, you should be using 1% 
um, in soap. So you should only be using about 1% of, um, of this particular um, product uh, to your oils. So for instance, we're using a thousand, this is a thousand gram recipe. So I'm only adding 10 grams because that would be 1% um, of you know my total mix in here. So we'll just keep mixing it all around and um, yeah, and it's going to make sure it's all gorgeous. And it's only a little bit of salt. Some people do add in also like a tablespoon of salt or something, but that will make your bar really hard and you, you really can't cut it because it can be real crumbly. If you're going to pop it in these, it'd be fine. You wouldn't need to cut it and there'd be no issues at all. Uh, but anyway, like I said, we're going to be adding this into here. So now the next thing I'm going to be doing is popping in my oils. So these are the oils that I talked about before. These are my just liquid oils, which is, you know, my um, extra virgin oils and things like that. And of course, um, my castor oil and so on. But I will pop the recipe down the bottom just so you know exactly what I'm making and um, you know I'm not leaving anything out because sometimes when I'm doing these videos and talking I kind of forget something or I think oh no what's the word you know and it slips off the end of my tongue and I just can't remember the word but I always pop in the recipe and um, that way you can get it and I like to be real I like to keep it real so that you know exactly um, who I am and what I'm doing you know yes I'm a professional soap maker but I make mistakes like everyone else so, um, you know, it's better to see that sometimes things go wrong. Sometimes they go pear-shaped and then that's keeping it real, isn't it? So, you know, that's what we all, we're all we all about at the moment. Just making sure you get that. And also, one last thing that I do do is add in some kaolin clay. Kaolin clay is really lovely for the skin as well. And it will hold in a scent if you've got one. I'm just doing like half um, a tablespoon um you know um of the caitlin clay and then all i'm going to do is pretty much i just popped it into the goat's milk so that way we'll mix it all around as well look you can pop it straight into your oil but if you get any powders and you mix it you're less likely to get a big hassle um you know of big clumping and things like that and you don't want that it's just really annoying um when that happens and then you've got to blend it longer and then it can be thicker and then you'll be all disappointed um uh, do remember sometimes when you're using goat's milk this um the mixture can go thick really really fast so what i'm going to do now that i've got everything in here i'll grab my blender and then i'll come back in a minute and we will do the next bit of uh making this gorgeous goat milk soap all right everyone i'm back again so here i do have my trusty little ten dollar cheapy blender just to show you that you don't have to use anything exciting and fancy and i just give it a little bit of mix like this and next what I'm going to be doing is just blending it. So I will cut out some of the noise so you don't have to listen to the noise. Right, everyone so we're back again now so everything is done it's totally blended up you can see it's a beautiful consistency not too thick and not too thin and we're just going to pour it straight into the molds and then we are totally and utterly done so don't leave this one either if you leave it it will thicken up super fast because like I said it is goat's milk and goat's milk does thicken up due to all the natural products inside it and milk, any milk product as well has that tendency to do that.
everyone I am back again so it is the next day today I've left these in the molds I'd say about 26 hours after say 20 hours I felt that they were still a tiny bit soft um, but my mixture that I use is not a super duper hard one if you pop it into soap calc my uh, mixture will tell you it's about 32 hardness so if you have a look down one side of soap calc it will tell you the hardness and it will also take the cleansing and so on. It's not always exactly perfect, but it's pretty much, you know, it will give you a good indication. But anyway, 32 is good for me, and I don't like my cleansing to be too high. That's why mine is not super high, because I don't put massive amounts of coconut oil um, into mine. But anyway, like, like you seen during the video, we did put some sodium lactate in, which will give it a little bit of a hardener, and it will definitely make it easier to release it um, from the molds. So let's get going and we'll open the molds and see how they go. I'm really excited to um, see them and it will just be a natural colour and then of course I will cure these for about six weeks time so then they'll go on my site in six weeks time. For all those people that have been asking me, um, you know, I have a lot of questions to say things like, you know, why aren't all of your items on your site or why do when I go on the site they say sold out? If they say sold out at the site, it means that they have been finished and they're curing. Once they finish curing, then you'll see the numbers come up. So then you'll see, you know, it might be 10 or 20 or two or however many I have. Um, then it will actually say that's the amount you can buy. But when they're curing and you know, they're not available, I don't do pre-sales. So um, once they're on there and the numbers show that they are available, it means they are totally cured. They are wrapped and they are ready to go to people's homes. So I really, I'm really strict on sticking to my six week um, time frame because I just don't want to send anything out that's not perfect. So anyway, that's my reason for it. Um, for a couple of girls that have been asking me, you know, why aren't they all on there? But anyway, let's get going and we're going to undo the last of this soap. And that way I can get this video ready for you guys all to see. Anyway, let's go. Okay everyone, they're all here and ready to go. Last night after filming, I decided to make a little bit of a rough top. So if you can see how it kind of looks a little bit rougher, I decided that it would look kind of nice to be a little bit rustic. So that's why I've done that on these. But anyway, getting them out of the mold, don't just pop them and push them out because you might um, pull them away from the edge. So if you literally just squeeze, the, you know, pull the outsides, not squeeze, I should say pull, and then turn them around and pull that again. And you can see here already how I've loosened up the bars inside. If you don't do that and you just try and push them, then they can be stuck and then you'll be all disappointed. And then, of course, once I've done that, simply just pop them out. And look how gorgeous that looks. I mean, that is a beautiful bar of soap. Um, for anyone that asks as well, which I've had a few people asking about gelling of soap, for me, I do not purposely gel any of my soap. All of my soap literally sits on the benches, um, as you can see here. Sometimes I will actually put like a cover or something on them, just so that, you know, they stay all gorgeous. But, um, but yeah, I don't actually gel them. And honestly, I've never had a problem. I've never had rings or anything on them, but I do try and keep my environment at a room temperature. So if it was super duper cold here, I would leave the heater on in this studio just to make sure they're all gorgeous and, you know, looking nice. And you can see here, there is no um, like rings or anything like that on it. Um, hopefully you can see it's pretty perfect. I mean, these colors may change, being goat milk, they might change a little bit different. But as I said, I decided to just keep them, you know, um, a normal, you know, kind of um, color and, you know, just its natural color. They do smell like soap. I always think soap does have a bit of a smell, even if you don't add anything into them. And, um, but you know, look how gorgeous these are. I mean, they have just really turned out beautiful. And like I said, it gives it a bit of a rustic look, doesn't it, on the back. You could scrape that and you didn't have to do that. I actually did that on purpose. Um, but you know, just because I wanted them, like I said, to be quite rustic. And um, yeah, so anyway, and we'll pop them all out of here. And then, like I said, I'm going to let these ones cure just for a little bit longer. Um, they need six weeks time. You can um, cure them longer than that if you like. Some of my baby soap sits on my racks for quite some time. Um, the baby soap, because I do, uh, my baby soap is not like a total Castile soap. I always do my baby soaps um, 
been a shea butter and olive oil so yeah so but anyway they they'll sit on the rack for 10 months but look how gorgeous that is like it looks just you know so creamy and silky and just beautiful so i'm really impressed with that and the color i like the color it's quite nice it does have it's kind of like a yellowy beige um you could have put titanium in if you really want it to be white but i like to keep them natural and exactly as it is because most people buying things like this want them to be natural and you've got to remember that people with skin allergies or eczema or anything like that um, they can be allergic to so many things i know from my daughter allison um, she's in her mid-20s now but she had such terrible eczema growing up um, so i do know anything affected her but anyway hopefully you absolutely love my soap i think they've turned out just amazing and i'm really really happy with them but hopefully this has helped you so give it a go and make some goat milk soap so for today we are totally finished if you feel that my video is amazing please give me a thumbs up because that honestly does help my channel and it does help us to grow as i always um say we're growing really um you know a great little community here so if somebody asks a question and you want to even answer it and you think you know the answer please feel free you know i'm not precious and it's great for all of us to give different opinions as long as they're said in you know a kind um, way and as long as you know um, what you're answering the questions to so you know if I don't get there before you feel free to to pop on um, you know a suggestion or even to myself I love getting like different comments and, and suggestions because that's how we all learn in this soaping community anyway get soaping everyone and make sure you are nice to somebody new today see you next time